guys, I'm Richard Beck with Beck's Armory, and have you ever had parts come off your CNC that look like this? All right, I'm gonna show you exactly how to get rid of this burr without any manual labor. The key is don't create this burr in the first place. And um, today I figured out how to do it, so I figured I would share that with you. So first thing, as your end mill gets more dull, this burr will get larger, of course, because the bottom of the end mill is coming around in a helical pattern, and as it wears down, it creates more heat, and it creates this burr that sticks out the bottom. Now, the problem I had was, was a couple things. First of all, RPMs maybe a little bit higher than they should have been, right? You can back that down. Also, <clears throat> if the bottom of your end mill doesn't finish below your part, um, the dull part of your end, end mill is going to be what finishes the hole and you're going to start to see a little bit of a taper. Um, so first step to getting rid of this burr is make sure that you finish your boring cycle about 50 to 60 thousandths below the bottom surface. That allows the sharp part of the end mill to clean up this part that was cut with the dull part of the end mill. Also, another big key, I had my finishing pass at a thousand because I really, really wanted to get, you know, this perfect, perfect fit, which I did achieve. The problem is that one thousandth step over on the finish pass is not enough to cut away this burr. Now, I know what you're thinking. If I go five, seven, or ten on a finishing pass, then I'll never get the accuracy that I want. Okay. So the key there, go at least five on your step over for your finishing pass, and then do a spring pass. And Fusion Inventor, it's just a box that says repeat finishing pass, so click that. It'll do one, a second spring pass without any step over at all. And that will ensure your accuracy. So what happens is you helically bore this hole, you go below the bottom, so that the sharp part of your end mill cleans up your hole. Then you do a five thou finishing pass, which gets rid of the bird that you created, and then a spring pass to get, uh, to reduce any inaccuracies due to deflection of the tool. And if you do that, your part will come out of the machine looking like this. Top, bottom, zero burr. Now you could chamfer that if you want, um, but you really don't have to. Now, if you don't want to do that, there's another really easy way to get rid of this ugly burr on there. I'll show you that right now. Step on up to your 2x72 belt grinder. Flip the puppy on. And just like that. You have a beautiful burr free part. Now, once again, you could take the little tool, you could take a countersink, you could do all those things, but most of the time those just push a burr into the hole, which is gonna be a little bit of a pain because now the shoulder bolt you're trying to put through there isn't gonna work. So anyways, I just wanted to share with you guys. I found it really helpful to me personally um, because I was sick and tired of having this stupid burr on there. So I started trying different things, and this is a conclusion I've come to. So if you're sick and tired of burrs, don't create them in the first place. Follow the tips in this video, and you shouldn't have any burrs in board holes. Anyways, if you found this helpful, give me a thumbs up. That really does help the algorithm. It's the biggest thing that you could do to support this channel. And it also, you know, makes it worth it for me to continue to put out content. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time.